The court in St. Vincent gives the opposition the go-ahead to challenge election results. And in sport, Wendy's women urged to settle as they try to end their demoralizing losing streak. I'm Don Paris, and this is the Caribbean in 10 for Friday, June 30th. I'll be back with the details after the break. The Sajiko Cavehill School of Business and Management invites you to attend Navigating a Path to Growth, a risk and competitive intelligence conference at Hilton Barbados Resort on June 26th and 27th, 2017. Speakers include global strategy and risk expert Dr. Andrea Schotter, regional PwC risk assurance leader Bruce Scott, Miss Lisa Padmore, Dr. Delisle Worrell, Mr. Ian D'Souza, Professor Patrick Hossein, Professor Julian Marcel, and many others. For more information, call 246-424-7731 or visit www.uwichsb.org. Secure your space today. The John Connors Fife. The rhythm of the drum, the strum of the pan, the lilt of the voice from island to mainland. All pigments and tones, old and young, his and hers, all we are one. You, we, me. This is UE TV. We begin in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, where a court this morning gave the main opposition New Democratic Party, the NDP, the green light to go ahead with their election petitions. The NDP has won on all counts on the election matters before the court. Justice Esco Henry ruled that the motion by the government to strike out the petitions is an abuse of the process and the petitions will stand. The NDP is challenging the results of the December 9, 2015 general elections in the central Leeward and North Windward constituencies. The party is asking the court to declare it the winner of the elections in the contested districts or order fresh elections there. A previous judge, Justice Brian Cottle, had initially thrown out the petitions as improperly filed. But the NDP appealed that decision and the Court of Appeal, of Appeal reinstated the petition. Opposition leader Dr. Goodwin Friday spoke to reporters this morning after leaving the court. It feels like our heavy weight has been lifted off the nation because we've waited so long to say what we want is for this decision, the, the, the petitions to be heard in the mouth. The court today agreed that that should be done. Well, the, 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 she agreed that it was an abusive process, and let the lawyers explain the, the um, details of the judgment because we don't have the written reasons yet. But the ultimate decision is that their motion to strike out the petition so that it doesn't go forward is dismissed. And the court ordered costs to the side of the um, our lawyers. So we are overjoyed for the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And what it says is that we in the Democratic Party, we place our faith in our legal team, in the justice of our cause, in the support of our people, and in the justice system. Former opposition leader Arnim Eustace says it was a frustrating process, but he's happy with the court ruling move forward with our petition and present our evidence before the court. Are you, think, are you think very happy about that? Let us decide how our lives will continue their work and we get ready for the petition. If the election is called, then we'll have to deal with it. Thank you. Amen. Very good. A year and a half now. God is in our Waiting in frustration. Going Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley says he intends to bring the issue of self-governance for Tobago to the Parliament by next year. Speaking at yesterday's post-cabinet media briefing, he said he believes Tobago has earned the right to discussion on self-governance. 
Rowley said while there is a document on the matter, Cabinet is yet to finalize a position. And there also has to be discussions with the Tobago House of Assembly and the rest of the Sister Isle. We still have not seen the perfect item called to be internal self-government for Tobago. But we know that we've made some significant progress, and it is my intention as head of this cabinet to take what has come out of Tobago through the cabinet and into the parliament, straight into a joint select committee arrangement, where the entire House of Parliament will determine, um, with proper advocacy, of course, what we will agree on in the end, and hopefully in 2018, the government, the, the parliament of Trinidad and Tobago would um, rise to the occasion of agreeing to some great measure, if not totally, with the people of Tobago as to what level of autonomy Tobago would finally receive and continue to develop. And still in Trinidad, the government has grounded four crime-fighting helicopters because it says it just can't afford to pay millions in maintenance costs. Prime Minister Rowley said the cabinet had to consider whether spending $200 million to maintain the helicopters was the best allocation of money in the fight against crime. And the conclusion was that the government can't afford the payment at this time given the current economic climate. Addressing concerns about the void that will be left, Rowley said there are other helicopters in the country that can be used. He said the sale of the helicopters is not off the table, but it's not under consideration at this time. In 2010, the government signed a 348 million U.S. dollar contract for an aircraft and support package. Stay with us. Your midday sport is next. Grow your business or promote your event through the services offered by the Caribbean Media Corporation and Carib Vision. Our distribution provides a platform on cable, terrestrial television and websites. We cover carnivals and events from across the region. We can bring your event live and alive to the world. For music makers, program producers, businesses, we can expand your reach to in excess of 2 million households daily. Our other services include news updates to enhance your media products, studio space for program and development. We can facilitate the launch of new products and services and training. Contact us and we will help you unleash your creative ability, develop products and services, and provide the medium to watch them grow. Contact Loretta Skeet at cmccaribbean.com or call her 1-246-467-1044 or 1-246-253-3889. Call and book your carnival or event today. In sports, veteran off-spinner Anissa Mohammed yesterday urged her West Indies women teammates to relax, rekindle their self-belief and simply express themselves as the Caribbean side continues to desperately search for solutions to end their demoralizing losing streak. Speaking in the wake of their latest defeat at the ongoing ICC Women's World Cup, which was a seven-wicket loss to India, Mohammed said while the side comprised of world-class players, self-confidence is lacking. We need to, to relax and keep believing in ourselves. Um, try to, we need to find a way somehow to relax and recuperate and keep believing that we are great players. Um, I keep saying to the team, people say that we are a great T20 team, but this is the same team that helped us qualify automatically for this World Cup. So we can win t uh, 50 overs game as well. So we just need to keep believing in ourselves and go back to what worked for us in the past three, four years and come out in this World Cup. And it's time that we, we pull everything together. And that's Caribbean News Line. Join us again at 6.30 for Caribbean... That's Caribbean Intense, sorry. Join us again at 6.30 for Caribbean News Line. Good afternoon.